Tallahassee, Florida, two young men, Van and Ben Lewis, were arrested for protesting in front of the Tallahassee Memorial Hospital. They were charged with disturbing the peace. The leaflet they carried stated that scientific research had shown infant circumcision to be damaging. In 1980, Circumcision, an American Health Fallacy by medical researcher Edward Wallerstein was published. The subject is so overladen with these overtones of social and cultural and, and sexual and religious factors that they are afraid to touch it. And uh, physicians will say, well, we'll be neutral. We'll let the parents decide. Now, that's a cop-out. In December of 1981, the Saturday Evening Post magazine published photographs of a circumcision. For the first time in mainstream media, the public saw what the most common surgery in North America looked like and the horror the baby boy experiences. When I first saw circumcision images, I thought that had been done to me and to every other man who was circumcised at birth. What gives any adult the right to do that to a child? My name is Tim Sally, and a lot of people in the movement probably know me by the pseudonym that I used, Tim Hammond. And I got started in this movement in the late 1980s when I saw uh, an episode of uh, the Phil Donahue show. Uh, Marilyn, get in this. You're against it. I am against it. When I first had my son circumcised, I didn't know what, it, what the procedure was. I had no idea what they were going through. And when I went to nursing school, I saw the procedure for the first time. And I was shocked and horrified by what I saw. To see a baby strapped down to a plastic board and have part of his penis cut off without an anesthetic was horrible. Hang and, on a minute. And during, let me just finish, Phil. During that procedure, the doctor said there's no medical reason for doing this. After I met Marilyn, she introduced me to Wayne Griffiths, who was the gentleman in the San Francisco Bay Area who knew the most about foreskin restoration. And after talking to Wayne and learning somewhat from him, uh, we decided to form a support group, uh, thinking that we're not the only ones, probably, who had this interest. There might be others who are doing it that we might learn from or that we might help in the process. And that's when we formed uh, what was initially then RECAP, which uh, stood for Recover a Penis. And then ultimately it became the National Organization of Restoring Men, which by now has become an international organization. I remember Marilyn showing me a photo of two protesters holding up signs saying something about circumcision was a human rights violation. And it was obviously late 70s, judging from the bell-bottom pants. And they were both wearing masks of some sort over their faces. And I thought, number one, that's courageous. But number two, they were obviously concerned about their safety or, I don't know, losing a job or being recognized in the town for bringing up such a, uh, an unusual subject. But it was very inspiring to me personally to see that kind of a photo. I remember being outraged by the California Medical Association passing a resolution in effect recommending infant circumcision, even when the American Academy of Pediatrics was trying to stay neutral on the topic. This was the only state medical association that I was aware of that had ever come out so strongly in favor of infant circumcision. And when I learned that it was primarily through the political maneuvers of people like uh, Dr. Edgar Schoen, that just infuriated me. And I just remember a response was called for. And that's when we decided to organize a protest. We knew that if we were gonna try to grab media attention, we needed signs, banners, even with the support of everyone else, I'm going up against a statewide organization. This is the first time I had ever organized a protest on my own. I remember being scared, but I also remember that we need to do something dramatic if we're going to catch the media's attention. I had a tape of actual screams of a baby being circumcised, and I remember holding that up 
to the crowd. The point of our rally was to be able to meet with a representative to voice our concern over their new policy. We proceeded to the front doors of the building and it was lined with police officers. But we approached and Jim Bigelow and Marilyn Milos confronting a representative from the CMA who had obviously been called down. He didn't seem really confident in his position, uh, but his purpose there was to keep the wolves at bay. And I remember Marilyn just stating in the clearest of terms, you mean to tell me you're refusing to speak to us about a surgery that's done on our children without fully informed consent? And he just, he was speechless. He didn't know how to respond to that, except to say, uh, to affirm, yes, we're not going to speak with you. And another thing I, I recall is uh, afterwards, Marilyn told me that she could see Edgar Schoen up in one of those windows of the California Medical Association building. And he was kind of smirking at us. It was like, who are you um, to protest us? We had another protest in 1994 at the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And the reason we chose that was because infant circumcision is not responsible medicine. And it was time for a national organization, we felt, who claimed to be for responsible medicine, they needed to speak up about this. Yes, I remember Dwayne Jordy also was at this uh, protest. He burned his birth certificate. And that's a strong form of protest. When you're willing to sacrifice something by being arrested, going to jail, destroying a very pertinent document in your life, like a birth certificate, uh, in protest of something that was done around the time you were born, that's significant. Another target for our street protest, Olympic Medical, based in Seattle, Washington kind of health care reform had protesters in the streets of Seattle today marching against circumcision. They say the practice mutilates babies and there is no good medical reason to do it. The demonstrators took their message to Olympic Medical, a Seattle company that manufactures a board used to restrain babies during circumcision. They were targeted because they are complicit. They produce the board that the babies are strapped to. In any other scenario, that would be considered an instrument of torture. The protest included a group of nurses from Santa Fe, New Mexico, who have refused to take part in the surgeries. Because we couldn't stand the brutality anymore. And we encourage nurses all across the country to join us as conscientious objectors. One of the things that we incorporated into that protest was suggested, I believe, by one of the nurses of St. Vincent's, and that was to place the circumstraint on the sidewalk and lay flowers in honor of the victims of what is essentially genital mutilation. I remember, I think it was the president of the company, actually finally allowed one or two people into the lobby. And uh, all that Marilyn and some of the nurses of St. Vincent wanted to do was present them with the flowers while they voiced their concern. And the president of the company was just very dismissive of the whole action. The American Academy of Pediatrics says there is no clear medical reason for routinely circumcised. My name is Jacqueline Maire, and I'm a retired registered nurse. What triggered my outrage about circumcision is when I came from France and took this refresher course to become a Canadian nurse. Uh, in British Columbia, I witnessed the circumcision and this was an absolute disgusting surgery that I had never imagined could be done on children for no reason whatsoever. All my years as a nurse in France, we never saw anything like that. My husband and I attended the first no circ a symposium in California. We got in touch there with Marilyn uh, Milos, and I cannot say enough about the courage of a nurse who's been fired for picking the truth. I can't 
say enough about this power in her and the determination and uh, the dynamism that she showed and how she managed to gather all these very competent specialists. John Erickson. He was not afraid to upset people. I, I wanted to raise people's consciousness, but I didn't necessarily want to upset people. But he knew instinctively, you need to get people upset, to get the dialogue rolling. The International Symposia on Circumcision, Sexual Mutilations, and Genital Integrity have provided unique forums for education and discussion on sexual mutilations. The papers presented are published as a series of textbooks and comprise a growing body of perspectives. I can't forget the circumcised shoes from Roy Pardee's art installation um, and Barry Ellsworth's film, The Nurses of St. Vincent, uh, or Soraya Murray's film about female genital mutilation, Fire Eyes. I felt it took a lot of courage for Soraya to make that film and to speak frankly about her own experiences with FGM and also to speak out against male genital cutting too. We tried to pass a resolution, but um, they used a subtle little way of um, escaping the vote. The issue is a hot one, apparently too hot for even nurses to talk about. It was to have been debated today at the annual meeting of the Registered Nurses Association, but a motion from the floor put an end to debate even before it came up on the agenda. Of course we were defeated, but at least circumcision was on the map. Uh, nobody would dare to reshape his nose or his ears or anything without his consent. And why the penis when there is no valid medical reason whatsoever to justify this aggression? As I was a nurse and a classroom assistant uh, in the Richmond School Board, a few of my little students saw me and said, oh, Madame Jacqueline, Madame Jacqueline, we are with you. And I was a bit comforted by that because they were all boys. Following the publicity, Jacqueline and her children received harassing and threatening phone calls. The head nurse of the maternity ward of the Royal Columbian Hospital received a letter with a death threat for speaking out against circumcision. The protest at Marin General Hospital was timed to coincide with one of the anniversaries of Marilyn's being fired from the hospital. Certainly Marilyn has the passion and the commitment uh, to follow through on this. I think she also is aware, uh, as I know I'm aware, that Marin General Hospital is not just the birthplace of a lot of babies. It is the birthplace of no circ and the modern day movement to protect children. During the past three decades, an unprecedented number of books and periodicals have focused attention on genital cutting of infants and children. Many of these illustrate a profoundly compassionate, scholarly, and humanist perspective. We're learning new information. We're discovering that this is harmful.
What you've got is a surgical wounding. It's uh, what you have to then ask, is that justified? The more that I learned about it, the more I became concerned that in fact it wasn't medically ethical to do it and it was possibly not legal either. In 1998, the August issue of Men's Health took an unflinching look at infant circumcision. The detrimental effects to sexual function were frankly discussed. This expose generated an extraordinary response from readers, the majority applauding the magazine for questioning circumcision. With the publication of that article, No Cirque received more phone calls than from any magazine article of the previous 20 years. Um, you cannot remove normal, healthy, sexually functioning tissue without interfering with normal, healthy sexual functioning. And that's true for both the male and the female alike. The difference is profound. The British Journal of Urology published a supplement devoted to circumcision providing a wide spectrum of views. Included was discussion of severe complications caused by infant circumcision. Every so-called health argument for circumcision is merely an excuse. Who are we to say that Mother Nature made a mistake? Little boys are born with this tissue, with this, with this foreskin, and they should not have it cut any more than little girls should have their genitals cut. The American Academy of Pediatrics does not recommend a policy of routine newborn circumcision because we found that the benefits are just not significant enough. A coroner is investigating the strange death of a five-week-old B.C. baby who died last week after being circumcised. Bleeding and infection can complicate any operation. Since its beginning in 1986, No Cirque has grown into an international network with more than 110 centers worldwide. Every year since 1994, David Wilson, founder of Stop Infant Circumcision Society, has staged a week-long protest at the United States Capitol. David and fellow intactivists speak with visitors, many of whom are hearing about circumcision as a human rights issue for the first time. Genital Integrity Awareness Week brings the issues around genital mutilation to the world stage. Circumcision does more than just remove a foreskin. Circumcision removes a choice. That choice should be the right of every individual boy and man to make on their own. And to circumcise an infant, whether at a day or eight days, is to permanently remove that choice and that right that that human being has to control their body.